Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus today is on your health. It's no secret that tobacco use and exposure remains the leading preventable cause of death. Smoking, secondhand smoke, use of other tobacco products, and health disparities are serious problems in Milwaukee that pose health risks to both the smoker and surrounding individuals and children. My next guest is here to talk about campaigns that not only focus on tobacco use, but also the opioid epidemic that's claiming lives every day across America. Carrie Lurch is the Deputy Director of the Community Advocates Public Policy Institute. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you for being here, Carrie. And first off, talk about the Community Advocates Public Policy Institute and what it is you do. Sure, so Community Advocates was started over 40 years ago with the idea of really providing basic needs advocacy for our clients who come in the doors every day. Mm -hmm. Typically, we're known for our housing services, energy assistance, but our founders at the time thought in 2008, we're seeing people cycle through our doors and we're placing band-aids over their issues. Um, and could we be doing anything more from a policy level so that we're really changing systems so that they're not having to come to us every time they're in crisis. Mm. So our Policy Institute is now 10 years old. We just celebrated 10 years last That's year. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and while we do our typical what people would think of policy work, we do legislation advocacy, we help research legislation, we've also grown um, our prevention work. We've really increased that work over the past several years. And what that's what I like to call our little p policy work. Mm -hmm. So a great example I love to share is the Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition, which we staff, helped um, and was instrumental really in working with the Milwaukee Police Department in, in getting drug drop boxes in their police stations. Yeah. It's still policy change, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but that was something that we were really focused on. It's more community level, um, and that's really some of that prevention work that we do in our institute. I think that's amazing. So uh, you've got the City of Milwaukee Tobacco Free Alliance that falls under yes. the Community Advocates umbrella. And like you said, your goal is to prevent and eventually eliminate the issues that actually bring people to your doorstep for services. So uh, last segment, we discussed how tobacco is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much out there that surpasses just cigarettes. Yes. You know, uh, there are these new nicotine products that include e-cigarettes and there's little cigars, sweet candy flavors that are specifically targeted to young people. Yes. It, that's obvious. And none of this looks like uh, our mom and dad's cigarettes. No. Things have definitely changed. Mm -hmm. So you have a campaign that speaks to young people and I'm guessing uh, really taps into parents as well to help everybody better understand the effects of this uh, epidemic. Yeah. So we partnered with the Thursday Night Lights show, um, so which features high school football games every Thursday night. Which in airs the on my 24, I should it say. It does, yes. it does. Um, yes, so one of the campaigns we're doing is around tobacco, and we've been really active in the tobacco space, particularly recently around e-cigarettes, because as you mentioned, they're changing. Not only are we adding so many like candy flavors, like cotton candy, what adult wants to smoke a mm -hmm. cotton candy product? Mm -hmm. This is really geared at young people. Yeah. But not only that, the forms they're coming in, they are literally as small as flash drives that you can plug into your computer. They're designed so that they can more easily be hidden from parents and our teens and are hearing, teachers yes you know, teachers yes. see these things and they think oh thumb drive absolutely and our young people are getting the message that it's safer than cigarettes these can be used as a way to stop cigarette smoking um, so they're trying these products and really as you mentioned previously the city of Milwaukee just put out a press release that advising people should stop smoking them because more and more people have recently been admitted to hospitals with lung disease it's so true mm -hmm. as of August 27th there were 215 possible cases from 25 states of lung disease that may be tied to vaping and many of the patients acknowledge recent use of THC containing e-cigarette products and I'm looking online and social media and trying to really get a grasp of what people think when it comes to uh, everything that's taking place and you'll hear someone chime in and say oh but those people were using THC mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like you find individuals 
trying to justify it when clearly uh, there's evidence mm -hmm. that it's not a safe product. Right, and I think part of the issue is this is still relatively new. Yep. I feel like in this day and age, things are being released so quickly. We can't, the FDA can't keep up with really it's regulating true. and making sure that these are safe products. So whether it's a THC product or an e-nicotine product, um, really we don't have enough long-term research to really show the effects that it is okay. Um, so really at this point, what we're trying to get the message through to young people is just don't don't even start. Don't, don't start until we know more. Yeah, and, and that's a ways off because like you said, mm -hmm. this is a fairly new product and you're just now seeing these numbers across uh, the country of people dealing with uh, yeah. lung scenarios that are, mm -hmm. some of them are not reversible. So right. I, I think that's scary in itself, just the not knowing. So mm -hmm. uh, you're right, just to avoid it, period, mm -hmm. is helpful. But you guys also have a campaign that focuses on uh, opioid abuse. Yes. You've got roughly 21 to 29% of patients prescribed opioids for chronic pain that misuse them and sadly an estimated four to six percent who misuse prescription opioids transition to heroin. So yes. that is another scary situation yes. and this has been going on for some time now. Talk about that campaign. Yeah, so this one is particularly important too because pe young people, um, really even adults, but young people were concerned about getting started, they think it's safe because it's prescribed by a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so what we find, you know, and people are really well-meaning, but you know, a young person might have a headache or something and a, a parent or a loved one might say, oh, I have this from a left, you know, leftover from a surgery, take one of these and that'll help you. And these are powerful narcotics and if they're used in ways they're not meant to be used in, mm -hmm. that's when people can start to um, overuse them, use them incorrectly, become addicted. So a lot of that campaign is actually focused on how to keep them safe in your homes by storing them securely, how to dispose of them securely. If you're not using them, get them out of your home so they're not at risk of being diverted to someone else who doesn't you know, mean to use them properly, yeah. um, and they'll be, you know, incinerated and disposed of properly, not en not ending up in our water systems or other ways that they can be harmful to other wildlife. Yeah, I always have to tell people do not flush your unused yes. medications yes, yes, down yes. the toilet mm -hmm. because it gets into the water system and it's not able to, you know, get that out as it is right. other things. But um, also have to remind individuals that there are all these drop-off places now. You have a lot mm -hmm. of the drug stores where you can bring in your unused prescription drugs, yes. put them in the drop box. Like you yep. have mentioned, you worked on uh, getting a place for people to drop them off with the police department, right? Yep. It's started off with police departments primarily because of DEA regulations, mm -hmm. but it's been so great since the regulations changed a few years ago. We've seen more and more um, private pharmacies, even big name pharmacies like a CVS or a Walgreens come on board. Yeah. Even recently in Milwaukee, some hospital systems have come on board and it's been great. So there's really, there should be a point of access no matter where um, you're getting your prescriptions from to dispose of them properly. Yeah, so it's great information just to remind people that that stuff's out there. Yeah. And and believe it or not, drug overdose is the leading cause of accidental death in the mm -hmm. U.S. with over 52,000 lethal drug overdoses since 2015, mm -hmm. in, in 2015 actually. So as part of the Public Policy Institute, you focus on uh, targeting the root causes and results mm -hmm. of things like substance abuse. So the whole thing is to prevent it before we get to addiction and things of that right, nature. Right, right. This goes hand in hand with mental health well-being. Yeah. We're really trying trying to share the message that we don't want people to use these um, pills or e-cigarettes or whatever that may be um, to cope with other things. Let's find healthy ways, um, healthy resistance skills so that you're um, handling your stress and coping in an appropriate manner and this doesn't become you know, a way that can you're accidentally overdosing and um, you know, creating um, increased suicide rates that we're seeing also spike. So they definitely go hand in hand. Yeah. They really do. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much thank for the you. information. I want to remind everybody at home that you guys deal with housing instability, homelessness, barriers to em employment, uh, self-sufficiency, violence, and racial inequities 
all the things that you focus on. Yes. And I really appreciate you coming by today and giving us information on how people can be aware, uh, mm -hmm. ways to prevent people from uh, being in these scenarios and all the great things that you're doing. A website where people can get more information? Yeah, it's best to go to ppi.communityadvocates.net and there we have more information about both of these campaigns, both of these projects. More than likely if you're in Milwaukee County, there's a coalition in your municipality and we would love to have you get involved. So check us out for more information there. All right, and keep your eye on TNL, right? Yes, on exactly, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> Carrie Lurt is the Deputy Director of the Community Advocates Public Policy Institute. For more information on anything that we discuss, you can give them a call at 414-270-2950. We're gonna take a quick break and when we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll get you ready for Milwaukee Health Services Inc's Laughter for the Soul event that's coming up on September 21st at the Riverside Theater featuring the one and only Cedric the Entertainer. We'll find out more about that and more right after this. Thank you.